And uh, oh, thank you very much, uh, Dan, our magnificent producer here, uh, back on YouTube with the Gladiators of Sport. Uh, all of us here, or most of us, representatives of 1116 SEN Radio, we're doing this show. We're having our second week here at Yellow Door, this absolutely wonderful eatery down in Albert Park, of course, with uh, fantastic food, great breakfasts and brunches. You'll see me down here regularly, of course, with the poached eggs, uh, salmon, spinach, grilled tomato. Yes, it's a beautiful meal. Plenty of breakfast to eat, plenty of lunches, and you'll really have a great time. And uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Some of our... Uh, uh, diners here are happy to go back to work, unfortunately, but uh, we wish them all the best as they head back to St Kilda Road, to the fine confines of St Kilda Road, Melbourne. What a beautiful area that also is. And uh, Yellow Door is our major sponsor here today, of course. Let's not forget Riccardo Strattoria, fine home Italian cooking of impeccable design and construction. Yes, beautiful meals at Phil's Place at Riccardo Strattoria during the week and how can we forget our number one man overall, Mr Philip Mance, currently on business in the USA at a big GMH convention, yes. The Mance Group do the big deals and get the thing right when they're heading around the world finding out everything there is to do about new cars coming into the system. Yes, GMH Holden, Nissan, Suzuki, Mitsubishi, Suzuki, you name it, HSV Special Edition, all at the Mance Group. Currently down there at the moment, get the new Pajero GLX four-wheel drive auto diesel, yes. 3.2 litre intercooled DHAC turb turbo diesel engine. Auto sports mode transportation, super select two four-wheel drive, rear differential lock and a smartphone link display audio all there around about the 55,000 drive away mark. The new Pajero, Billy, don't be a hero, get mummy a Pajero out there at Alan Mance Motors. Well, let me introduce the panel for today's show. To my, uh, to my left uh, is SEN 1116's uh, number one nostalgia man, statistics man. He's a genius at statistics and uh, he uh, normally gets it right. He didn't last week when uh, uh, from Antelone went down to uh, Hawthorne by 41 points and he bought me a cup of coffee because he lost a bet. Mr Troy Zantuck, how are you Troy? Great to see you Stephen. And obviously you've just uh, departed from a Ghostbusters convention there looking <laughs> like the giant marshmallow member. Great to be here. And we've got a great audience and we've got some very special guests at Yellow Door. What a great setting it is, Stephen. It is a fine setting here in the, of course, the, uh, the family and dog friendly courtyard here at the Yellow Door. And if you want to bring your kids down here, that's okay because you give them a piece of chalk while you're eating your meal. They'll ride a piece on the of wall. chalk. What is this? A Colgate commercial with Mrs. Marsh? Well, well, it does get in. It sure does. <laughs> they, they don't eat the chalk down here, Troy. They write with the chalk on the wall. So they don't need the Colgate. But also with us here today is none other than the former editor of the football uh, section of the Herald Sun newspaper for a very lengthy period of time, 25 years in fact. He was a journalist there before then. He was also He's also written the history of Tasmanian football. He's written the legends of Tasmanian football in, in a book and also put it together in newspapers in Tasmania. And uh, he has also... Uh, put together the history of the North Melbourne Football Club, which nearly escaped my attention. Mr. Geoffrey Polder. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, Troy. All the best. Good on you, Geoffrey. And also a special guest here today. We will be having a little bit of music today. Our corporate balladeer is here, Mr. Philip Hill from Echo Straits Car Parks, the number one car parking uh, operation in the surrounds of Melbourne and the city of Melbourne. Have your car parked safely at Echo Straits Car Parks, and they've just moved into, I think, RMIT, and welcome to you, Philip. Thank you very much, Steve, and uh, wonderful to be here and uh, look forward to the music and your voice. Yeah, thank across, you very much, Philip. And you'll be doing a wonderful song later on. We're doing another version of Imagine There's No Richmond to the tune of John Lennon's Imagine, only with new lyrics, more positive lyrics after what happened last week with the Richmond Football Club, different to what we did in September last year in December. And I'd like to introduce also, Stephen, a, a very special guest, a very special guest audience member. Yes. Alex, great to have you on board, Alex. Great to be here. Thank you. Yes, Alex, Thank you very course, much, Alex. And, uh, uh, is visiting the show, and she is actually from Switzerland, the confines of Switzerland, a beautiful country in Europe and uh, with mountainous regions. Heidi country. Well, Heidi country, says Geoffrey. You're spot on. And, uh, of course, I had managed to... I met Alex the other night at a little Buddha restaurant in Middle Park. Where else? Uh, well, Philip and I 
And Where else Alex, do you meet Swiss people went? with a little Buddha restaurant? <laughs> well, that can happen. Come on. And I found that Alex is also a big fan of Sweden's number one rock band, The Hives. Oh. Uh, uh, Troy, like my good Sorry, self, Alex, that, that can't go to air, unfortunately. Well, yeah, I'm not, I can mention it on my YouTube show, but I'm not allowed to mention it. And, li- and I'd like to uh, a, a big end. round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our world-class producer, Dan. Yeah, well done, Dan. Uh, who's Who couldn't be with us today, but as a replacement, we've got his twin brother, Ben. So great to see you, Ben. <laughs> Dan, Dan, of course, is, uh, works normally works in cohesion with Mr. Philip Mance, but as I mentioned before, our uh, other director, oh. Philip Mance, is in Europe, as we it's in America now. He's been to Spain and Italy. He's now in America at the GMH convention. Now, boys, we had, look, the big issue, I had issues lined up, and then as soon as I picked up the paper today, the big issue that uh, comes to the fore as we uh, commence our issues today is that the big dispute now taking place between the AFL Players Association and the AFL on how to split up the corporate cake, the money that comes into the AFL every 12 months. How is that going to be distributed? The players want a set percentage. They seem to be arguing for between 25 to 30% would appear to me of the gross amount and uh, are currently receiving amounts that have been negotiated with the AFL that uh, do equate to an amount of about 22%, I think, of the gross. Uh, now, I'll kick it off and say that I believe that if they want to settle this argument quickly and get on with the job of football and everything else that goes with it, it is my view that 25% is not outrageous. 25% a set percentage also puts the players in a position. If the revenue from the game ever drops, they have to cop the, the reduced amount. So if the revenue ever dropped, and, and let's not get carried away because we're uh, at the moment a bit of a struggle in... Um, uh, Queensland and New South Wales, there's a big struggle in Queensland as far as TV's concerned because a friend of mine lives up there, uh, uh, there a businessman who lives in that area and he indicated to me that there's often no live games on TV on the weekend. That's what he indicated to me in Queensland. I would have thought that would have been part of the TV rights deal, but he sent me an email recently said no live games this weekend, AFL matches. So uh, that is not good at all and I would have thought that would have been enforced as part of the deal. But and the way it is at the moment, I would I would just hand the players, if it's only 3% differential between what they're getting now and 25%, and cut this debate right down to size quick off, I'd give them 25%, without a shadow of a doubt. 25%, which would be probably they'd go up another half million to a million in the cap. It's going to go up probably that next year or the year after anyway. Give it to them now, or next time the, when it kicks into place. It might be the 1st of January or the 1st of July next year. Jeffrey, I know you had a point of view on yeah, that. You know, no, I, I support it. I, I support the 25% flat rate on the basis, two, two pronged basis. One, the, the PR needs to be, they need to, to they need to, uh, the people will support them if they spell out exactly what they want and spell out that the, that the, that the dividend doesn't include uh, money raised through uh, you know, poker machines or uh, uh, dividends from the stadium. Stadium deals, any of that sort of stuff. That, you that, can't that, cherry pick your costs, Jeffrey. No, but then again, those no, they, they wouldn't come donations from clubs and things like that. You, you oh, can't. No, 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 no. It's what the AFL raises. In, yes, that's, in the I, TV that, revenue we know and what any it, other money that comes into the AFL. We know what it is, but the people have got to know. It's got to be spelled out that that's what they want. Yeah, well, that's, and the other thing they though, need Jeffrey. to to emphasise is. The staff costs at the AFL, which are massive, and the number of people that work there, 100 million or something in staff bills, plus a huge media department. It, if they were clever, they'd go through there and, 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 and cherry pick it, use your, your expression, Stephen, and, and they would say, who exactly, do, do a, a cost survey. Mm-hmm. How many of these people absolutely, what do they do? What do they provide? How much revenue you know, do they really bring into the game? Because the players are entitled to the money. They're entitled to the revenue. Yeah, well, look, there could be some... Who audits the AFL? Do the clubs... Who organises that? I mean, that's the big question there. There's a lot of money coming into the game, so perhaps you're asking for a regular yearly... Well, they get audited anyway, you'd imagine. But the AFL itself is... It's like a... They're not going to audit themselves. ...abominable statement. It it, it starts off as a snowball at the top of the hill. By the time it gets to the bottom, it's a bloated... A bloated, yeah. abominable, <laughs> a bloated, white, abominable snowman. The other thing I wanted to mention... Carrying a lot of superfluous yeah. weight in the snow. The, the 270000 a year, I, th- I think I read, was the average player payment, which is not unreasonable. 270. I, mean, I, think, yeah. I think the average player now lasts about three years. Yeah, and that's the average think, is 365 games. You can run down the race and break your leg in the first game. It's not just 270 for one year. Correct. It's whatever you earn to, to be spaced across your career. And uh, you know, Correct. and you, some of these fellas, uh, after they retire from footy, 
uh, that, that learning has got to carry them through. So there's that aspect of it. And the other one is that footy started off as, you know, one or two matches with fellas playing in a circus-like way, didn't they? They said, well, we, we need people to... We need to pay administrators to run the game. We can't run it ourselves. Yep. So the players pay the administrators, and it has to be done on a cost basis, doesn't it? You know, um, we'll pay them whatever they can bring... Well, whatever money they can bring into the game. I've got a feeling the AFL has fallen into the trap a little bit of hiring people that are... They're trying to compete with the corporate sector and they're hiring people that would be going for jobs in insurance or business and all the rest of it. And Just on that, Stephen, have, have you offered your services to the AFL in any capacity? In the past, I have. Yeah, yeah. I have. On had that go? On four occasions, never had a response. So, oh. uh, look, they've got a legal division. Don't forget, Jeff Brown started off there with them in 1989, 1990. Oh, they what a great success him. story he's been, well, Jeff Brown. Well, fantastic yeah. for the AFL and uh, he did their legal work for... Some length of time. Now they've got a, 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 an internal division. Andrew Dillon, I think, is a senior counsel in there. And he might have a, a legal division with him in there. I don't know how many you'd need. But, see, given that you've now got copyright issues, broadcasting rights issues and all that, you've got to get lawyers who are proficient and skillful in the area of copyright, drawing up media contracts and documents. So they're very, you know, to, to the uninitiated lawyer, they're very difficult. So because if you haven't had experience or learned how to do that, you're... You, you wouldn't get a job. But in more of the administrative side, the football side, ironically, that's where I would have... Could you see you know, yourself fitting in, possibly, yeah, but, down yeah, but the track? Troy, Troy, you've got to remember that... And I was told by a senior administrator in another club that they don't pick anyone under 45 years of age. That automatically rules me out now anyway. I, I wouldn't get a job there now. Is that not ageist? It probably is in a way, oh. but that's the way it is. They, they, they won't tell you that, but they just won't respond to your application. So The wealth of experience that you've got, you've... Well, you've well, managed players. A number of people. With the, yeah, yeah, I've managed players. I've done AFL management. You'd be, player a, you'd management. be a great I've done, asset. I've done products. I've done football gloves. I've taken players to America to break oh. into gridiron. I'm in, you know, going back 25 years, 20, 23 years ago. But, I mean, it, it doesn't seem to, you know, at the end of the day, that's, oh. that's, they may be things that I've done, but that's not what they're interested in now or what they see as being pertinent to what they're about. So they're trying to present a fairly young and... Uh, 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 energetic attitude to the public at large that they're a go-ahead outfit. You've got to look at their CEO, Gillian McLaughlin, saying, what would he be, 44, 45? Wouldn't be any older than that. His Might age's not a that. number. Well, it's, it, that may well be the case, Troy, but I don't get to make the decision. The decision is being made by people who are in a position to make the decision, which isn't me. I mean, all I can do is file an application. All I'm saying, can, Stephen, is that you've got the... so much to offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a radio platform. Yeah, well, you're well, a star Troy, of SCN 1116. Yeah, yeah. You're a lawyer. Yeah. You're a bloodstock agent. Yeah, yeah, we know all that. I could yeah. turn up Yeah, I could turn up at AFL House and uh, maybe uh, not wear a suit. I'll put on a, uh, a dancing attire and I'll do a song and dance act for uh, uh, the uh, populace there and see if that gets me across the line because I can't give them any more information than what I've given about me. They've got a 12-page dossier on on me. So I'm trying to put a burr in your saddle. You're, you're, you're you putting, need you're, you're, to knock on doors. You, so, oh, so you're a not happy with what I've done. Needs. I've been knocked back three, four times. A man of your talent You want me needs. to now have a fifth attempt at 61 years of age trying to get a gig in there. Now, if you could realise the stupidity The people of that sitting comment. with me around this table are all nodding their head in agreement. Are they? We yeah, need well, to see I can, you, I can tell you on right the big now, screen. Troy, we need to see you on Making decisions, legal decisions, on behalf of the AFL. But I just told you I'm not I'm not proficient in copyright law or to the degree they would be and media media law of drawing up contracts with TV stations. I think I'm you're gonna, selling yourself no, short. No, no, Troy, well, let me just tell you one thing lawyers don't do. We don't enter into areas where we do work that we don't do. Because that's a good way of upsetting your insurer when you get sued for negligence, right? So mm. you don't do work You've got a point there. Do. Yes, correct. While I'm on the issue of law... Ladies and gentlemen, after that diatribe, let me tell you that Law Week is still on. Uh, it is now the 20th of May. We're doing this show. Two more days. Victorian Law Foundation, Law Institute of Victoria, a government-sponsored Victorian Legal Aid and uh, the Victorian Attorney General's Office. Law Week. Courts open on Saturday. If you won't go into the night football, you can go along to some of the events that are on there. You'll see it on the website. Go to the Law Institute website or VCAT website. Is. And go along to uh, see how judges run court cases. And uh, uh, there's a judge's barbecue on between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. outside at the county and, court. So and, you can have a steak or a sure chop be, with a judge or a magistrate. And make sure you behave yourself, otherwise you'll be going along involuntarily. Yeah, yes. Well, you'd want to behave yourself or you might find yourself uh, incarcerated. So, so will we find you hovering around the uh, judge's barbecue area? 
Well, no, I'm more than likely probably won't be there because I've got a few things to do on the weekend. But if I get a chance, I will drop by. Yes, oh. Troy? If I get an opportunity. Will you, will you sample the, um, well, I'm hoping, the magnificent you know, chops and steak on offer? Well, you'd hope they would be, but how can you forecast that before they cook them? You know, I mean, that is another comment <laughs> that's just absolutely stupid. Coming to the panel today, I don't know what's going on over there, but there's something happening. You uh, look like you could go without a chop and steak for the next five weeks. <laughs> what a ridiculous mark. You've got to get your iron, mate. There's iron in steak and chops, there's, and that's a, that's a very important vitamin and mineral. And that's something that I would have thought a fitness man like you would have known about, but unfortunately you seem to be deficient in knowledge today. Uh, gentlemen, last week, I, I noticed a few things last week about the round of games that uh, uh, I think we can start to make a few summations about. Number one, that St Kilda is no good on the road, basically, apart from that game against Hawthorne in Tassie. They're no good in West Australia at the moment. 14 losses, I think, over there. They've, they've lost their last 14 on the road, and I don't think they've beaten West Coast over there for, I don't know, what length of time. Might be six or eight years. Even under Ross Lyons, strong St Kilda sides did struggle on Subiaco Oval against West Coast. West Coast are nothing more than a bunch of flat-track bullies who win at home, and when they get out of home, they become insipid and soft when they get away from home. Now, teams that can't win on the road don't, don't, don't win grand finals and don't win premierships. They're, they're talking about on the, getting uh, on the road, Steve, and there was a team once they called the Possums because they got killed at home. And <laughs> The Possums? <laughs> and they what? played dead at home and got killed on the road. Did they, and, were they, and I reckon flat were they track from Tasmania bullies, or where, where was this flat, in Tasmania? Yeah, flat, what was I the reckon town? Fr, flat track bullies is the cliche of the week. I think we bar that from now on. Okay, we bar that. <laughs> what do we? I can't. I, I can't. I can't hear anybody talk about West Coast Eagles without saying they're flat track flat track bullies. And if you if you said it a month ago, you probably get some sort of recognition. But you know, what was that term again? <laughs> <laughs> no, F T B. Well, the term, I agree with you, Geoffrey, and I don't like to become a, um, uh, uh, another mouth organ for uh, people who are uh, constantly uh, protruding. You're just a walking comments, cliche, uh, in flat the, track bullies. In the newspapers or whatever, because I rarely do that. But I can't think of a better description for them because they are insipid away from Subiaco Oval. Well, they, they just they, scraped in, didn't they, against the Saints yeah, to the yeah. tune of 103 points. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Troy. Mm. They... they, they Flog teams over there. But and you're stating the bleeding obvious. Everybody knows they're uh, front runners. Okay, well then I put, a, I put an additive to that. They can't win the premiership. They cannot win this year's premiership if they're going to continue like that and come over to Melbourne or go to Adelaide or Brisbane or anywhere else. Yeah, absolute, that I looked at the absolute fair comment. That is, yeah. you'd have to agree that teams that win flags win everywhere. Teams that win premierships win wherever they go. If you have a look at Geelong's draw, did you see that article in the paper the other day, Stephen? If uh, you have a look at their draw compared to anyone, all the other contenders. Well, and what's it like? What's that Well, they've like? got two hard games, uh, uh -huh. and, and, and they, their only travel is to Fremantle and, and Brisbane. All the rest are here or at Geelong. Well, they got an easier draw because they finished 11th last year, so they, they were uh, reduced yeah. with the games against top 10. Then so, they recruited some very strong bodies, as we saw. And what they've done, and I've been, said this a million times, they've decided not to go down the full rebuild route, but to mix, but the mix, the baked cake has now got raisins and sultanas in it. They've yeah. mixed it anyway, up with they, the young kids coming through, yeah. plus strong bodies around them, but quality strong bodies. They, they won last but week got, by four goals, and they had a lot more scoring shots. They should have won Adelaide. by fourteen goals, and, Jeffrey. And they've they've covered every. Particularly yeah. their big strength is well, the options yeah, through the midfield. With me. They haven't just got Dangerfield and Selwood, but they've got right. several players that run through the midfield. So they look, I reckon they're firm flag favourites. Well, Purely, they, they, they might well, fall apart in the I finals. I haven't made them flag favourites, but, but, but they're get, in the mix. Get they're in the mix of They're going to play in the finals, win. and they're going to probably not have to play away from, from Melbourne, and that's a huge advantage. Well, massive. They're going to win 16, 17 games, the way they're travelling at the moment. I think that, and now we know, when GWS beat them up in, uh, in the Spotless Stadium, or whatever they call that place, in that... Uh, you know, nothing place in the middle of nowhere. It's one you know, of the cleanest stadiums in Australia, Stephen. <laughs> well, I'd expect it to be, wouldn't you? Uh, 23 or 25 kilometres out of uh, Sydney, isn't it? Whatever it is. Yeah, that's okay, but they're trying to get people up there. But that's a strong side. But they only got 8,000 people to watch their, uh, their most recent home, home game there, which is a terrible crowd. I mean, this side could 
You couldn't argue against... You could run an argument. They could win the Premiership this year. You could run that argument. Look at Devin yeah. Smith. They've got a few. We went through the list last night. They've got five or six players out of their best 22 out as we speak. Well, I rate them equal second with Sydney. Yep. So Another uh, guest has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. Mr Michael it, like, Cook is here and uh, an associate. And uh, we welcome you to the YouTube Gladiators of Sport here on this lovely Friday, the 20th of May. Uh, so we agree there. Geelong are in the mix. You're going, to, off, the you're mix. going to offer Michael... A seat or? Yeah, Michael, if you wish to grab yourself a chair. Well, mate, I'm doing a show at the moment. I'm not a caterer, nor am I a, 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 an usher. At Your this point levels of rudeness are quite extraordinary. <laughs> we not... have guests and you haven't asked them for a seat. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they can find one there, Troy, without any trouble. There's about six Those chairs coffees, to my right. Two, two coffees just on Stephen's bill. <laughs> Gentlemen, okay. thank you. So now, well, Fremantle uh, was heavily discussed last night, 1160 in again. Uh, I believe that they've done everything right. They've made good decisions with their personnel and are on track to uh, blood uh, a number of players this year. You would have heard me last night have a massive argument with Howard Cotton, who believes that Ross Lyon should be scrutinised, mind you, by the Fremantle board. Well, I told Howard on here, and I'll say it again now, that's the most ridiculous comment I've heard in football for probably 50 years, because that man, if he hasn't got any uh, petrol tickets in the bank for at least the length of his contract, then uh, I, I don't know football. Simple as that. <laughs> so you're now conceding, Stephen, that um, being beaten in the, in the grand final is out of reach for Lyde this year? It was what, sorry? Being beaten again in a grand final is now out of reach for Ross Lyde. It's now not his fault. I, I didn't get the last bit of that. I still couldn't get all that. I say you, you now concede that being beaten in a grand final is now out of reach for Ross Lyard. This correct. Year. That is correct. Yep. <laughs> I see your point. And do you think his contract might be extended to 2030 or not? Uh, well, if I was on the board, <laughs> I'm not on the board. But uh, I think what you, I believe that what he's done now is he's been, and I like the way he brutally goes about what he's doing. He's just said, right, you, you three or four, you're going to hospital. Go and get your injuries fixed. We don't need you again for the rest of the year because we can't make the eight. If you should come back and redo your injury, that, cact, that makes you cactus for next year. So you go to hospital now, bring along all those kids on his list of 14 under 50 games and 9 under 10 games and get as many games into their bodies as you possibly can. Look, I mean, I'm a lawyer. This is not rocket science. This is obvious to everybody out there. But no one wants to listen to that. They just want to say, oh, last year he was 17 and 5, but now he's not, mate. What are we going to do? Take him out the city square and give him 10 lashes or 20 lashes because they're 0 and 8? That is rubbish! Absolute rubbish. I don't think they're going to get rid of him, unfortunately. But uh... oh, They don't want to get rid of him, Geoffrey. The board love him. He has meetings with them every week with Chris Bond, Steve Rossich and Steve Harris. Jeffrey. How many lashes? <laughs> 10 or 20. I don't, what do you get on the mutiny on the bounty? They got 20, I think. The, the other problem is, is rebuilding. You, you, you've got it. You're going to put games into all these young fellas. We wonder how good the young fellas are. They'll find out. Certainly, we'll find, find out. But out. there's no guarantees. And then, and he, when he, you were, they were concentrating on topping up all the time, how how good are the, how many decent draft picks did they get over the last few years? That's well, the they thing. never had good draft picks. No, you know, so you, you, up. They were you at can't twenty five. You can't rely on. So, you, yeah, so what's you happened can't rely to them? This was always it was always going to happen because when he got there. He was in the same position St Kilda was in when he got to St Kilda in 07. And that was, I can win a flag with the core group, but I've got to build some strong bodies around them now and give it the length of time, three, four, five years. Go to Frio, Mark Harvey had developed the list and the coach before him, most of those players had played four, five, six years and he had them at the purple patch time of their career and they just missed a flag. So again, he's gone to the well twice. He's done it the way I would have wanted him to have done it. And that is, you don't get to a position where you think, gee, I can win a flag, but I've got to blood kids for five years down the line and then start blooding kids and losing matches and finishing sixth. Or I can't win a flag from there. I just need to go to uh, some of the members of the crowd, Stephen. I just want to ask Alex for her opinion on uh, Stephen's presentation skills so far. Yeah, I, th I thought so, Alex. Uh, lost for words. Oh, Phil Hill. We'll go to Phil Hill, the corporate balladeer, for a word on your presentation skills. I think very detailed, very knowledgeable, Steve, and uh, Thank you, Philip. Res respect what you say. But uh, the, there's a few issues in terms of last week. Your predictions didn't quite come home. Yeah, last week, my position on some issues. No, no, no. Your prediction of winning teams didn't winning quite teams. work. Winning teams. I think I've got a few there. I think so I went to our great friend here. who's very knowledgeable with yeah. Tasmanian Origins, yeah, which is correct. even better. Yeah. And uh, might have been a bit more solid advice. 
Solid. A bit more yeah. solid, was he? Okay. Well, well, we'll go through that in a minute. Uh, Thanks, uh, Phil. I just a wanted a quick trip. comment from you, Matt. I didn't want the Gettysburg address, but thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. And uh, Alex, too. Yeah, thank she you. just no, shook Alex her head in absolute disbelief. But yeah. keep going, mate. You're doing a great that, job. Okay. No, I, can, I can see that you... you, you oh, look, the good thing about it, Troy, is that you're, trying, you're democratically trying to turn this into an encounter group, and I do appreciate your performance. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide, Adelaide, we know, are brittle and I can't see them challenging for premiership. They might make the eight. Carlton are responding to, to Bolton magnificently, doing a great job. And uh, with the Alistair Clarkson legacy of knowledge, I tell you what, Alistair Clarkson's reputation keeps rising. Every time a, a Bolton comes out and starts turning a club around like that, his reputation again goes higher and higher in the uh, pecking order of the coach, coaching lexicon. Do you reckon um, Carlton's improvement... Uh, came like a Bolton out of the blue. Well, well, Jeffrey, that could have happened. Jeff meant to say like a Bolton out of the blue. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, and I said that. Yeah, you could be right. So uh, yeah, a Bolton out of the blue. I, I like the, uh, I like the analogy. I like that analogy. It's it's clever and sensible. And Jeffrey is both clever and sensible. Richmond are an enigma, Stephen, as we know. Like, They're an enigma. Stephen, like Phil, uh, Phil, the corporate balladeer, and myself. He's a Tasmanian too. Bolton. You're Bolton, is, is he? Where's he from, Jeffrey? What part of Tasmania? Georgetown, which has produced Georgetown. Danny Clark, yeah. Brad Green, uh, Xavier Doherty. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, amazing. Gee, and, the, a... and the boy called Nan Curvis that plays with Sydney at the moment. The, the tall Oh, boy. the young kid up there. Right? All well, from that's, Georgetown that's on the right hand side of the, of the Tamer River above Launceston. Yeah, but just it goes to tell us that sooner or later either a team's got to be based down there or they've got to get a team. You know, they need one in the, in the competition. Uh, Collingwood win a game and the media just goes to sleep for a week and. Uh, Let's see how they go on the weekend because uh, we'll go through that later on. But I'd, uh, I think I said it last night. What I think is going to happen with that game? And um, you, uh, do you have an inbuilt bias against, against the, Collingwood? Well, you know, you often say to me when I raise an issue a few times, you go, "Have you got an inbuilt bias against these people?" Because you, you're not listening to the reasons and answers I'm giving about what I'm saying about that club. Now, Collingwood were the, all the news up until the last Saturday when they beat Brisbane. The papers have they've become. There hasn't been a Collingwood story hardly in the paper all week. Now, there's been no back headlines about Buckley still under pressure or anything like that. All the pressure valve's gone off. But you seem Why to get a real kick out of it, a real emotional high mm-hmm. when Collingwood are defeated. They're defeated? Yeah. Well, do I reach an emotional Look, high? Look, you're, you're smirking at the moment. Well, now, 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 like, now, I heard now, your now, prediction now. on air last night of 10 goals. Yes. The, ju- you're, you're the a, cats will, will defeat You're a psychologist the now, eh? You know what my temperaments are and what my mood swings are, do you? Whatever. No, he's not all that crazy about the cats either. <laughs> That's right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got a song for you today, actually. And uh, Mr Philip Hill, of course, our corporate balladeer, has his guitar with him. Now, those of you who are avid 1116 SEN uh, listeners would know that uh, in September in the final series last year we put together a song called Imagine There's No Richmond and it was a bit scathing and we put together another one after the the Martin al- alleged incident in the restaurant. We put another one together but now we've got a new one to try and placate those Richmond supporters who were most angry about the way we dished it out to Richmond. And I'll leave it up to Phil to kick off the tune and call me into the song. Imagine there's no Richmond It's not easy anymore To do Last week they beat Sydney We won up Sydney And their Their pride pride has been restored Imagine all the supporters cheering crazily. Oh, oh, oh. imagine Sam Lloyd as the match winner. As the match winner, it used to be hard to do. So I. But he kicked the ball so sweetly 
so sweetly And it sailed right through A man to He's a dreamer, but he's not the only one. His tigers, they won again to restore their equilibrium. Imagine Jack Revolts, which will lightning rod. quirky issues of the week about to commence there. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Look, I found a cutting that I did in April 1995, uh, which is 21 years ago at the Herald Sun. And we, it's, this was um, a c- called Crazy Corner. I used to write a column called Crazy Corner in those Crazy days. Crazy Corner. So I said, so Anthony Rock has finally joined, An- A- A- Anthony Rocker has finally joined Anthony Rock and Severio Rocker in the, v- in the AFL, which sparks an idea. Let's have a bit of fun with this. What if the trio formed the basis of a new league side and we recruited a few more similar Ock or Ock sounding names from outside? You could add Darren Crocker, Doc Baldock, Mocker Dunstall. Dunstan, a Jocker Todd, Knocker Coleman, Blocker Rendell, Gary Hocking, Tony Lockett, Wally Lock, Soccer Toomey, Waka Kappa, Choco Williams, Chooker Howe, Rocket Ede, along with a Dutch nav- aviator, a former pop singer and a member of the new Fremantle team for the following unit. And here we go. The team is Rock, Rocker, Rocker, Doc, Cocker, Crocker, Focker, Blocker, Mocker, Hocking, Jocker, Knocker, Lock, Locket, Rocket, Soccer, Walker, Docker, Interchange, chocker, chocker, chocker. <laughs> what a now, unbelievable! First, Phil Hill, the corporate balladeer, and then Jeffrey Polder's quirky corner. We're just absolutely, absolutely we're, we're a flush with the quality here today. Now, Jeffrey, you've written some books. Uh, Jeffrey's written a number of books. You've on... coloured in some. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, fair to come, but uh, just, you just don't know what they're going to say or do around here. Uh, now, Jeffrey has written a number of books uh, on football, not just on what I mentioned before, but some on quotes, quirky quotes and uh, quotes of coaches and players, etc. Now, I'm sure you would... I think you need a new book, Jeffrey, which is to, to make sure we consolidate something like that should be front and square because that's one of the best teams of players I've ever heard, if not the best ever. I oh, appreciate that, Stephen. Yeah, we'd we'll love to, to look at the uh, the funny yeah. side of footy. I think we take ourselves too seriously sometimes. So yeah, we do. Well, that, we, I think we need to. Uh, and, and you and, and I have don't a, do I, that. I've got a joke <laughs> of the day for you too. A, a guy, joke? Yes, a guy yep. was walking across the road out here not so long ago and he yeah. got run over by a car and he didn't have any ID on him. No idea at all. He went to hospital. Hmm. He went to hospital in, in his suit and white shirt and business tie. He was in there for about six weeks and he got out of bed, put his suit on. They said, you can go home now. You've recovered from your concussion. Mm-hmm. He had no ID. He said, all he mm-hmm. found was a dry cleaning ticket in his pocket. And he looked at it and it was a dry cleaning clean around the corner here and he went there. He went in, showed the guy the ticket. He said, should be ready on Thursday. <laughs> should be ready on Thursday. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Jeffrey Polter at his best there. Poltz was one step from mounting, climbing Mount Everest, and he just slipped straight off that cliff right <laughs> then. He was brilliant. Well, well done, Poltz. Excellent, Jeffrey. They're fantastic. Phil, big round of applause too for Phil big Hill. Man, yeah, again, Great Phil Hill with a well magnificent done. piece of guitar work. And, and uh, uh, Alex mentioned that your, your dance moves should be up on MTV very shortly under the uh, filed under the Joe Cocker okay. section. Well, I wasn't dancing. No, but uh, your uh, hand movements and oh. your neck movements and that contorted facial movement was uh, oh, Joe put, Cocker 101. Put a lot of feeling into my uh, into my music. In no, fact, you'd have been congratulated. Well, ironically, Troy, that uh, you've mentioned that because I made yes, a mistake. I, I on heard 11, that on uh, SEN 1116 last night, Joe Cocker's birthday Alex. is today, but unfortunately yeah. died two years ago. But if he had been alive, he would have been 72 today. He died at 70. I made an error. I didn't okay. make an and error. And how old would Alexander the, the Great be today if he was rude. still alive? Who was that, sorry? Alexander the Great. How, the great. how old would he be if he was still alive? <laughs> what a ridiculous st- comment. I don't to have make. his statistics on me. You know? Yeah, Jack I'd Dyer once said, uh, Stephen, it, when there was a pandemonium, he said pandemonium had broken out at Richmond. Yes. And he said if, Jack Dun- if Ray Dunn was alive today, he'd turn in his grave. <laughs> Jeffrey Polder, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, boys, we better get down to the games because we want to talk about the teams and the games. And uh, Dan, our producer, is nodding. He said vociferously there because he doesn't want us to run out of time. So we've got uh, plenty of time, I think, left to do that. But uh, no, Dan will tell me. He'll tell me. Yeah, he's got the hand signals going, yeah. but I can't add up, Dan. Well, I think I'm maybe just selections today, Stephen. Just selections. Uh, what, sorry? We'll just have our selections today, not uh, you know full blown no, we'll synopsis we'll, we'll, we'll of no, 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 twenty we'll, minutes. No, no, okay. We've got twenty minutes. We've so got, we've got 20 time minutes, enough for Stephen to minutes, cover one game. Three Thanks, minutes Dan. a game, or two, two point <laughs> two point seven five minutes a game. Now Hawthorne plays Sydney night. Well, if I could get on with it, then I'd be able to get through it. So uh, tonight at the, the MCG, a massive game. Have there been some great games at the MCG in the last few weeks? We've been uh, the Richmond uh, game with Sydney. We had uh, Hawthorne and Adelaide. We've had some Ripper games. Uh, tonight should not be any different. At this point in time. Uh, let's have a good look at them. Uh, if I can find the changes, and I'll tell you what I can find them. In for Hawthorne comes Surioli away last week due to family issue overseas. Uh, sorry, interstate. No, inter- interstate, sorry. Interstate, interstate to Surioli's back. The swans of, uh, coming in for them are Ben McGlynn, Josh Kennedy and Gary Rowan. Three big ins. And they would have helped last week if they had been around, but they weren't. Uh, out for Hawthorne is Daniel Howe. Beautifully educated young lad from Xavier goes out. And for the Swans, a pap, he's got a shin, and Towers and Hiscock have been dropped. So, uh, boys, Hawthorne, Sydney, MCG, Hawthorne, dollar fifty-seven, Sydney, two dollars forty-five. Jeffrey, Stephen, I notice that uh, you've co- we've compacted uh, that into his name now into one word, Sirioli. Now, isn't it? Sirioli. <laughs> this is a two thousand and fourteen grand final rematch. It is. Mm. Mm. And you know the last team that Hawth, the last non uh, Melbourne team that. That Hawthorne last uh, um, team from inside Melbourne that Hawthorne beat in a grand, the grand final. Grand final Geelong in two thousand and eight. No, it, Melbourne team, not not a. Yeah, not yeah a, but I'm just saying. Out, it, it, Geelong's not Sydney inside and, uh, Melbourne. Freo and Sydney in grand finals, and uh, 
uh, who'd they beat last year? They beat West Coast. So West they're, Coast. they're three interstate sides. Yes. And the last time they beat a Melbourne based side was no, 2008, which is what I said. Geelong. Victorian based. I'm, Victorian I'm talking about based. Yeah, what did based. I say? I said Victorian based. M- Melbourne based, I want. Oh, sorry. Well, well, Geelong's, you know, okay, it's not in Melbourne, but it's on the surrounds of Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd be guessing uh, 1988 Pulse, Melbourne. That's correct, yeah. Melbourne. Uh, so yeah, yeah, since then, they've yeah. beaten oh, so Geelong yeah, and in the, Interstate. In the nine teams. teams inside the yes, Sydney Melbourne. You yes. know, I hear what you say, yeah. but I meant the way that you're yeah, Victorian based. Sorry. I think Sydney might win this game with, uh, <laughs> I think, without Hodge uh, and, and obviously Roughhead. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Sydney are closer to t- full strength, and I, I'm going for them to win narrowly. Yeah, look, I've got to agree with you there, Pultz. I think Sydney uh, in a cliffhanger. It'll be a great game tonight. And, uh, gee, they were stiff last week against the Tigers. The Hawks, yeah, they've got a few injuries. But, uh, yeah, just let's hope it's a great game. How many are you expecting tonight, Steve? Uh, 70,000. 70,000? 70, 70, 65 to 70 because of the Lance Franklin right. factor will bring in 15 Will you be in attendance? Are you... Uh, at, the, at this point in time, I'm planning on going, Troy, and more than likely I'll get there. Unless an impediment gets in my way in the interim. But I should be. Maybe there. dress code might get in the way. No, no, dress code's fine. Uh, okay. The skivvies are. Uh, you may not be uh, in tune with the rules of the Melbourne Cricket Club. Troy, I am in tune with the rules. And uh, skivvies, velour jackets, like what I've got there as well. Uh, de rigueur. What are we going to an Austin Powers uh, <laughs> convention? <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous here. Yeah, one thing I'll say this. I'll tell you one thing. You're out of tune with... With mature age dressing in the Melbourne members, you are. You're out of step. You're out of step with... No, you didn't hear what I said. Mature age dressing at the in the MCG members. You're out of step with that. Now, you might, you'd, you'd, you're wearing appropriate attire for you to get into members, and that's a very nice shirt you're wearing, mind you. You're out of step but, uh, you know, a lot of men, younger men your age wear what you're wearing, right? Older men my age tend to go for more warmer clothing and velour jackets or whatever. But look, we're wasting time. Why are we talking about this? You know, You're me, wasting yeah. time. Now, Sydney were lazy last week and should have beaten Richmond in that game. They had numerous opportunities. They blew them and um, probably went to Franklin too many times. Didn't go to Tippett enough. Now, if you go to Tippett, he, still, he can still take some big grabs. Go to Tippett. So 40%, 60% Franklin. Franklin has never been a big over, overhead mark. Never been a good big overhead mark. That's the only impediment in his game, but he's never been a good overhead mark. Don't go to him 100% of the time. Give the boy a, a little bit of air. Give him he's some a air. Good one. He's a good one. Well, he's not even really good. If you watch him, he marks everything on his chest. He doesn't leap on packs and take grabs. He doesn't do that. He never, he's never been known to do that. He is a, a six foot five athlete who has enormous skill still, with the ball. I still maintain he's a good overhead mark. No, I wouldn't even say that to Jeffrey. I'd have to disagree with you there. I think he's less than ordinary over... It's the only impediment on a perfect record of a perfect physique, perfect player, etc., etc. Everyone's got a glitch. Everybody's got a glitch. No one is a pure champion. So, uh, uh, for mine, well, it's a toss of the coin, but I'm going to stick with Hawthorne because they just seem to know how to get out of jail too many times. And then again, the three ins for Sydney, those three running plays, are going to provide a lot of depth. I'll go for Hawthorne by less than a goal. Collingwood, another, another win under a goal for them. Collingwood v Geelong. This is an interesting game. Uh, MCG tomorrow, 1.45pm. In uh, for Collingwood is Ben Reid. He's been injured to Bilio, that boy. Got knocked out last time. Sinclair's gone out with a concussion. Side bottom plays 150. And in for Geelong is Hall and Smith. Out goes Ruggles, the new kid in town. Uh, Jeffrey, we'll start with you again and then go yeah. to Troy. Um, just to keep it light-hearted, Stephen, yeah. whatever happens to Collingwood this year, you, you've got to maintain that they've, they've got a good year. They've had a good year. Had a good year. Yeah. They've got to play, but they emergency good tomorrow, yeah. Wits, uh, uh, uh. Marsh and Goodyear are the emergencies. And yeah. I think, uh, and to keep, keep the, 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 the comedy flavour flowing, I think after the grand final, we might be all ha- having a beer with Duncan. We'll have a few with Duncan. Yeah, could be right. You, so who are you going for? As premiership yep. favourites, and so yep. I've, I've got such, they've got such a good draw. So Collingwood will. will, will th- these games have produced upsets, actually. Collingwood Geelong over the last few years, the last decade, yeah. the, the odd upset. But yeah, I, have, I can't but see it happening. Biden. Can't, yep. can't see Troy. it. Happening. Look, Stephen, it's not often, uh-huh. and I say this with a heavy heart. It's not often that I agree with you, <laughs> but I'm looking at a Cats win by 10 goals. Well, there you go. We're at a dim. Of the one mind in Latin. Mm. At a dim. So, yes, Collingwood, 10 goals. Sorry, Geelong by 10 goals to beat Collingwood by 10 goals. Could you Geelong. make up your mind, please? Yeah, I said Geelong by 10 goals to beat Collingwood by 10 goals. 
Was that Collingwood? Geelong to, to defeat beat Collingwood by 10 goals. You sure about the Cats against the Pies? Yes. So yeah, the Cats by 10 against Collingwood. Cats to win, the same as you, 10 goals. Right. So Collingwood to get beat by, get 10, beat goals by 10 goals. From, yeah, by okay. Geelong. Yeah, so thank you, you very it. much. So uh, Collingwood to me, if you look at that side, I mean, Howe has done very little since he got there from Melbourne. Oxley's a new kid. Frost is a little bit out of form. Reed's been constantly injured. Pendlebury started off sick and injured and now playing great football again. Side bottoms, they're probably arguably the best player at the moment or close to it. Grundy's been out of form. Varco's been injured. Uh, Dugui came in after a couple of games in the seconds or something. Moore's still a kid. Cox is an American who's played a handful of games. And Jesse White's been in and out of that team more times than uh, you, throw, you see confetti get thrown around at a wedding. So... Uh, that to me is not going to be the hard-nosed operation like Geelong. Gold Coast v Adelaide at Metricon Stadium there on the Gold Coast there. In comes Riscatelli, Curry, Davis, Russell, Tape or Tape, depending on where you went to school. And right, out goes Gary Hamlet with concussion, Saad with a hamstring, Hall with a shoulder, Miller with an ankle, Nichols and Brooksby. In for Adelaide is Van Berlo and Lions out goes Crouch with Sordis and Crouch. Tro- Troy or Jeffrey, is it... Tape or tape, this fellow? I think if it was boxing, Stephen, you'd be talking about the tail of the tape, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so sorry, sorry. What a ludicrous <laughs> question to ask Jeffrey Polder. Is it tap or tape? I said tape or tape. Tape or tape. What would you say? I would say tape. Tape, okay. Like any was, normal there person. There was a Richmond would. player 25 years ago and he was called, he pronounced it tape. By any measure, tape. They had, Richmond had a tape. Tape measure. They did. They did, didn't they, Jeffrey? He'd remember. Tepe. They did have a tepe. So, Jeffrey, who are you? I'm going to be ta- you I, This is the Battle of the Lynches, isn't it? Uh, it is. Steve. It T is. Lynch, in fact. Um, but I, 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 Gold Coast are in disarray, so, and Adelaide should handle them comfortably. Troy? Yes, uh, absolutely, Pulse. Spot on again. I really respect, I very much respect uh, your opinion, mate. You're nearly on the ball all the time. Stephen? Yep. What do you think? Adelaide by 10 to 15 goals. Between 10 and 15 goals and possibly as much as 20. A goal... Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this'll, this'll be a pulverisation. Uh, wow, that's fantastic. So, are we talk, what are we talking as we're, far as... Bets are concerned? Yeah. Well, well, how about shouting uh, our say? table okay. well, uh, copies? No, hang on. Well, what do you, well, okay, but what do you say? What do you say? Yeah, I'd say 10. 10, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm saying 15 to 20. Mm. So if, if if it's 15 plus, you owe me another coffee. If it's or 15 if it's, plus? If or it's 15 or less, oh, well, hang on, you've gone 10. So 10 or less, and the, and the mid-range spot has to stay in limbo, doesn't it? Fewer. Fewer than 10 goals. If you, well, hang on a minute. Let's do what we did last week, nearest the pin. Oh. So I'll say 15 goals and you say 10 goals. Okay, right? the nearest so the, the pin buys so the, the other person is, a I coffee. Shout, I shout you a coffee, absolutely. Yeah, excellent. And if you lose, you shout uh, the six of us a coffee next week. So <laughs> All right, then. To oh, me, that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair, okay? isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your, your level of fairness would... <laughs> that, that, that is the sort of level that Vladimir Putin issues in Russia. Alex was goes. just saying to me what a great guy you are. But, so obviously... <laughs> Port You've just gone v- down in our estimation <laughs> after uh, welching on our bet. So. Well, Port, Port Adelaide v West Coast, in, uh, this is going to be played at Adelaide Oval tomorrow. Uh, in comes Grey, out goes Archie. The milestone is young with 50 guns. No change at West Coast. Uh, they're so confident about flogging some killer. Oh, yeah. Well, boy, oh, boy. Wait, wait and see what happens. Uh, Jeffrey. No, I hate to disappoint you, but I think... Uh on the road, this time West Coast might overcome yep, the, yep, the opposition. Yep. I, I mean, what Adelaide's form's ordinary, and they, and they were three ordinary. goals in front. They were yo-yo to go Jeff. last week, and they lost. Yo-yo yeah. team. And you know, I know West Coast find it difficult to win away, but I think they sh- we're f- almost at full strength, aren't they? So that should get them over the line. Yep, yep, yep. Troy. Yeah, West Coast by six to eight. Yep. Port Adelaide have lost their mojo, Pults, and uh, West Coast Eagles after pounding St Kilda into the Subiaco turf last week. <laughs> or, uh, Listen to him take joy in that. You know, I, he's, no, he's, I don't. He's I like, revelling in it. Yeah. I like reveling to see the like Saints a, kick like over three mud. goals in a game. Like a pig in oh. mud. <laughs> You're revelling in it. Uh, to me, West Coast will win that. Uh, I, wasn't, uh, I was being silly earlier on. West Coast by two goals or less. Uh, North Melbourne v Carlton in a massive game now with Carlton having won four in a row. But Carlton have been wilted uh, and weakened and wilted with injuries. 
Uh, White comes in and got Inge and we triggers back the young kid who's going to be anything. Out goes Jemison Ill, McCruiser with a knee and Kaz Bolt with a leg and uh, in for North. Ferrito and Farron Ray making his first appearance for mm. North Melbourne uh, doing an excellent job in topping up with the strength and the skill. Dumont comes in and out goes Jacobs, their tagger with a foot injury. Woods got concussion and door. And the new Ray is Farron, new man is Farron Ray, the new Ray in town. The new Ray in town. Now, so, uh, Jeffrey. Talking about <laughs> Jeffrey. injury. <laughs> I'm talking about injuries, and North had, didn't, hadn't had any for a while, but they've got actually nine out of the, their best 25 tomorrow. And they are Wells, Higgins, Wright, Wood, Turner, Jacobs, Garner, Anderson, and Hanson. And Hanson. Nine out of their best twenty-five. So, people, you know, didn't have Still an injury. Win. Didn't have an injury of any note apart, apart from Garner and Anderson the first few weeks. So. Still should win, but uh, every as John Kennedy used to say, every every win is puts you one game closer to a loss, doesn't it? Yeah, it so, does. You, know, you don't have to be Confucius to say things like that, do you? No, but no. that it's fairly accurate. That's, that's an accurate. Okay, yeah, it's a very accurate comment. Well, we've gone from Confucius to confused over there. So, <laughs> what do you think, confused? <laughs> Oh, that's a ridiculous remark. You know, I've been on the ball with facts and substance the whole time. North, <laughs> North Melbourne, North Melbourne for mine will still beat Carlton, even though both sides have been weakened by injury and wilted, wilting with injury. Um, North Melbourne by three goals. It'll be a, a war of attrition. That's why you've got a list of 42. In fact, I'm getting a conclusion now. I think I agree with the Players Association. They want to see those lists extended to what some more up to 50 plus, and they need to be because... Our players, again, don't wear equipment when they're out there like gridiron players and they get injuries more severely. Fremantle playing Richmond. I've got time to d- divulge into that. I'll have to go into it next week now. Fremantle v Richmond there at Subi Echo. In comes Pavlich, who's pretty much just about needs the right out there now with a walking cane. Uh, Pavlich, D- D- well, he's, he's old, mate. He's had it. In comes Pavlich. Dawson is back. Sheridan. Out goes Hill with an adductor. Mazungu and Sutcliffe are dropped. I'm not being rude about the man. The man's been a champion, but the word is being a champion. He's now walking wounded. In comes Cochin and Lambert for Richmond. Out goes Craig Ellisaw, Dean Daryl Rioli, Daniel Rioli, I think so. <laughs> He's got a family illness. <laughs> he has gone to see the family members at this point in time from Mandel v Richmond. At, uh, this has been played at none other than Subiaco with Jeffrey. Uh, Fremantle's form's been pretty ordinary. I, I think they'll actually push Richmond because you know, at, at home, but Richmond has it, virtually everyone in, don't they? With Cochin back, they're full strength and they play all right away. So I think Richmond will win. Yeah, let's hope the Tigers can get their season back on track. Pults after a great victory last week, uh, sensational victory against Sydney, and Fremantle should be duck eggs again. So there we go. If you rang the Fremantle Footy Club this week, Stephen, you would have been able to ring, use the Western Australian prefix on for Telstra of 08, and it would have been accurate. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about Jeffrey. He, he, he just he sees information that the rest of us look at that we don't see. He sees things we don't see. Now, uh, yes, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, we'll, we'll get through it. Uh, I'm going for Fremantle to have their first win for the year here. Uh, I, be- I, believe that, I, be- <laughs> I believe that Richmond, uh, somewhat flaky, they did have a massive win last week, but did they celebrate too hard? Are they, did they get overconfident? We don't know that. We'll wait and see, but uh, pretty, I don't know, next week we might be singing the old Richmond, imagine there's no Richmond lyrics after singing the new ones this week. We'll have to wait and see. Fremantle by a couple of goals. Melbourne v Brisbane, we'll have to be quick here now. MCG Sunday. Uh, in comes Grimes, Newton, Kent, Neil Bullen and McDonald out. Jetta suspended and Salem in an extended bench situation. And for Brisbane, in comes West, Payne, Freeman, Jansen, Robertson, McStay, Evans, Matheson, Hipwood. Out goes Beams with a knee, Beams with a groin. Gardner with a finger, that's a different Beams I'm talking about. Uh, Gr- Green, Walker and Pap <laughs> Paparone. <laughs> New as Jansen from Geelong, Hipwood from Ap- Apsbley, uh, which is in Tasmania, I think, Jeffrey, isn't it? <laughs> and Matheson from Geelong Falcons. Gee whiz, now they're poaching Geelong players, Brisbane, from the, from the nursery of Geelong, the Geelong Falcons, Jeffrey. There is an Apsley in Tasmania, but I think this is an, the Apsley in Queensland. From, is it? Yeah, this is the one that right. relates to Hipwood. I don't well, think we should use the same in, city towns in different states, nearly, but that's not my, yeah. my decision. They're nearly in, in as bad shape as the Gold Coast, aren't they? Yeah, They're yeah, they fellow yeah. status. So if Melbourne doesn't win this game by 10 goals, then, then they haven't shown much improvement at all. Yeah, Melbourne have to win it, Troy. Look, uh, I'm going... 
I'm going to have to go to Melbourne. Yeah, well, the you reason have to, being do you? because oh, I'm sitting next to hard for you. No, I'm sitting next to Alex, and she uh, she big Melbourne supporter. Yeah. Yeah, and she's blushing. She's going bright red at the moment. Oh, so. now, you, now, you, now you're featuring your Chris Gale now, are you? Oh, tell you, oh. oh Don't peaky. blush, baby. Don't blush, baby. You're doing that now, are you? Uh, <laughs> gee whiz, Alex. That, uh, he's, uh, leave the funny stuff to me, <laughs> Mr. Gaspo. Okay. Gaspo. Yeah. Gaspo. Yeah. Oh, Casper or ah, the, the demons, absolutely demons. no, okay. no Melbourne problem. Is thing, yeah. We're all going there. Alex, Alex Troy, is enjoy- Jeffrey, Alex is uh, really enjoying Dan, the show. I'll yeah, just yeah. put Alex on. Come on, Alex. Are you enjoying? Are you enjoying the show? I do. Yes, yeah. there we go. And you, Melbourne, tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, they win. For they sure. win. Yeah, Alex is right. Alex yeah. from Switzerland zips Melbourne to win. Alex from Switzerland. Uh, That's at the yeah. MCG in Melbourne, Australia. I'm glad you got her full surname from inter- Switzerland. Thank tip. you very much, Stephen. Tip. Yeah, but uh, that adds color, color and culture to the show. That's an international selection, and I'm a proud of it. GWS Giants for the Western Bulldogs. It's not just a local show or national show. It's now an international show because they have a Melbourne supporter from Switzerland present. So. <laughs> GWS Giants for the Western Bulldogs. That argument's got in more comes holes Reed, in it than Tomlinson Swiss and cheese. Green. There's no need to argue about anything. Uh, in comes Minson, Stevens, Yong, Yo. Honeychurch and Collins. <laughs> Out goes... It's, it's a silent J. You, Troy, one thing you haven't heard is... The boy's Vietnamese and I know how to talk that. So it's Yong. Out goes Boyd suspended. Red Path are suspended. And the new, comes, the new boy coming in is Kieran Collins of the Danny Nong Stingrays. For me, I'll go straight off the bat. GWS Giants will beat the Bulldogs here by about five goals. Jeffrey. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Stephen. Uh, spotless is the key there, isn't it? And, and the injuries to um, the Bulldogs. We talk about GWS injuries, but... Um, yeah, Bulldogs are greater than any, yep. really. So I think, I think GWS wins. Yep. <laughs> ben, Ben slash Dan, he's winding us up as you blow your nose. Yeah, I didn't blow it. That was a great blow into the microphone. I didn't there. do that, you Troy. Uh, I, just, I just wiped a bit of sweat off the under, uh, under carriage uh, of the nostril. You got, a, you got some great nostril work there from uh, <laughs> from Stephen. We might call him Nostradamus with his predictions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be a Bulldogs win. A Bulldog upset over the Giants by three to four goals. GWS, they have got a few injuries too, but as I pointed out to Mark Fine last night, I said... They bat down to about 34, 35. You know, most other teams don't. They have an armoury up there, a war chest of players. Genuine West by five goals. The Bulldogs have to sooner or later. They've got to fall over. So Kilda VS in the last game to discuss, which is at Eddie Head on Sunday uh, at 4.40pm with the Legends game on earlier on in the day. As we speak at the moment, I believe I'm a goal umpire in the Legends game and I'll be wearing old-fashioned gear. I'll be wearing a white dust coat. I'm trying to get a white fedora hat. Uh, and and black shoes. What, sorry? And a white carnation. And a white... I don't know whether Steve <laughs> Stevens had a white carnation. I'm trying to... to, to uh, what is it? To clone myself into a Steve Stevens from the 66 Grand Final. Th- so this is a... Re- kill of the uh, so it's quickly, Jeffrey. Hang on a minute. In comes Fisher, McKenzie, McCartan and Holmes. Out goes Loney. And in for Essen and uh, comes none other than Gwilt, Michael, Merritt and Gleeson. Out goes Grimer with a hip. Uh, this is a rematch of the 65 Grand Finals. Season, it is. And I'm yes. tipping a, a reversal. I think St Kilda will win this time. Yeah, well, thank you, Geoffrey. Yeah, well done. Troy? Yeah, look, um, look, St Kilda, it's hard to go past their former last week, but I'm going to. Uh, I think Essendon will win in an upset. Yeah, there won't be much in this. In fact, I'm they, worried about it. They, they had uh, a good last half, a very good last half against North Melbourne. The Bombers the previous week. And, uh, yeah, look, I think this game's going to be a lot closer than than uh, what most people think, Stephen. Well, and uh, it's great to see that you're going to be just uh, doing some of your finest goal. Goal yeah, umpiring yeah, work on uh, Eddie Hatt Stadium. Doing the best on Sunday and yeah. 1.30 for the Legends game. So I'll be, uh, all yeah, the best with that. I've got a white dust coat and I've yeah. got a, I'm getting the rest of the attire together. Black shoes. Yeah. I'll be wearing a tie, a dark navy blue tie with a white shirt. And I'm loading up on rotten tomatoes and rotten eggs <laughs> as we speak. Uh, I'll be... <laughs> I'll be down to the fruit shop and, and the egg, the egg department very shortly after. We're actually, the, after the, this we're YouTube the show. you're going to join the cheer squad, the Essendon cheer squad or something. You're I going know. to wear a pink carnation. Yeah, I, I don't, mean, I nice don't wear a carnation when you're going. I'm probably going to fall out anyway because I'll be running up and down the goal line there trying to pick out points and goals. Maybe the same as on the pill, the musician would know. You know, a white sports coat, coat and a pink, and a pink carnation. carnation. Well, we'll think about that. Uh, boys and girls, so and just, $1.20 in that game, Essendon 480. Yeah. They're ludicrous odds. And it just should quick, be a dollar, yeah. maybe a dollar sixty St Kilda 220 Essendon, but 
just I, quickly, Pete. St Kilda by no more than a goal or 10 points. Yeah. I'd just like to thank uh, everybody yeah. that's participated in the show today. I'd like to uh, throw it over to Phil Hill, the corporate belladeer. Well, it's uh, great to be here, be part of it, and uh, very enjoyable. And uh, I'll watch the selections and see see what the outcomes are. Yeah, well, I got a lot right last week, Phil, and I'm happy that you can see that. for a, a team. That's what we're going to do. You'll be able to see that when you do look at your revision of uh, show, six from, uh, show six from last week. This is show seven. I want to thank Dan, our magnificent producer here, who uh, has uh, come out of his way and his time in being able to attend today. He's a busy lad. He's a law student as well as uh, has other business pursuits. And yeah. he's kindly made his afternoon He's a good man, Dan. To, uh, to film our show and we thank him for he's that. He's Dan the man. We do. Well, yes, without a shadow of a doubt. We thank Phil Hill for his uh, yeah. entertainment and his uh, guitar playing, which you, is you, exquisite as per usual. You close Popper. your eyes and you would have thought it was Eric Clapton. Yeah, and yourself there for your input. I do appreciate it. And I'd like to thank Alex for being I was uh, about to do that. a critical yeah. observer of our show. Yeah, from and she's given it uh, yeah, the, the two thumbs up. Yep. And, uh, yeah, thanks. Thank thanks you. For we love the international content brought to the show. And uh, thank you very much, Alex. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, thank you um, very much. Every heart beats true. <laughs> uh, it is. And uh, we, we do admire. Um, is Stephen uh, a funny guy? Is, is Does he make you laugh? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that took a while to think about that. That's okay. <laughs> Look, everyone sees what people do a different way. You vet no in all seriousness, you're a great entertainer. You no yeah. you are, seriously. Well, let's you not worry are. about No you are. You know, let's not worry about that. We're here to do a job. We hope you enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. Boys don't be girls. humble, it doesn't suit you. No, don't worry about that. We're brought to you by the great Alan Mans Group, Alan Mans Motors in Footscray, Melton and Bacchus Marsh. A full range of motor vehicles there, new and used. Go and have a look at the used division. If you're looking for prestige used car, they've got them there as well. Mercedes, Benz, BMW, the whole shebang down there. Yours truly, Stephen J. Peak, seven weeks ago went down there. Six weeks ago, got a magnificent two-door black coupe Mercedes yeah. uh, with uh, some Ks on the clock for a great price and negotiated a great deal with Philip Randall and Alan Mans. They're doing a mighty job. We thank the Yellow Door uh, management here for this great venue here in the courtyard at Yellow Door. Uh, breakfast and brunch eater. You'll find me down here every day of the week uh, at brunch time uh, here at Yellow Door. Yeah, it'll be cordoned off, ladies and gentlemen. It's not cordoned off or anything. <laughs> it's not. It's a. It's a restaurant or a bistro, not a zoo. And you can go down to Ricardo's Trattoria really? for fine Italian uh, cooking. Also, if you're buying property in the uh, Melbourne uh, Middle Park area or Albert Park area, Greg Hocking Real Estate. Hocking Holdsworth, Peter Zervas yep. is there, Greg Hocking Real Estate. They'll do a mighty job for you. They'll look after you. Family friendly, personality friendly. Get the best price and negotiate your, your terms, yep. and they are a mighty. And where uh, do we go to buy handkerchiefs? Uh, we're going to, you uh, seem no, to be you're throwing that around. No, no, well, no, I worry about the handkerchiefs. <laughs> they, they do a mighty operation there. And, of course, BizBaz Hardware across the yeah, road here Tony. in Albert Park for Tony BizBaz, yeah. who sponsors uh, the BizBaz Corner on 1160 oh. SEN Gladiators, a sports selection dissection. Which you were thrown into last night, I heard, on the great uh, I did end up there, but don't worry about that. The BizBaz Hardware, they do a mighty job as well, uh, helping and supporting and sponsoring. And uh, I Philip think Mance. Covered, Philip you know, Mance I mentioned Philip Mance incredible. as well, who's currently travelling around and he's at a conference now, in, yep. uh, in, not in Germany, in America. Now you're throwing me off the boat. And the Emerald Hotel, Paltz. The Emerald Hotel, sorry, Emerald for Jeffrey Poulter yeah. is there. And I mentioned Echo Straits Car Park, of course, for Phil Hill, a mighty organisation. Phil, the CEO there, doing a mighty job. And Echo Straits Car Parks, they will put you uh, your car safely uh, there uh, presented uh, <laughs> when you go away and come back to collect it again. And drive away. also Skivvies R Us. And We'd like to thank Skivvies R Us. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much for tuning in for this uh, show, our seventh show. We'll be back next week with more of the same here at Yellow Door. Gladiators of Sport. We're all from 11.6 and SEN. We'll see you then.